A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, there was a planet called Tatooine, and this hot, dry desert world was in a binary star system. The scene of Luke Skywalker walking up to a sandy mound and gazing out at the twin suns is without a doubt my favorite image from the entire Star Wars saga. A young man looking out at two suns, two paths, two choices that will affect the story that is the rest of his life. Added with the jaw-dropping score by John Williams, this scene for me encapsulates the very spirit of Star Wars. Now, the binary star system that Luke was looking at is not at all far-fetched. It's not made up for the sake of movie magic. In fact, according to the most current scientific data on the subject, it is estimated with great accuracy that roughly 80 to 85% of the stars in the Milky Way galaxy are actually a part of binary or triple star systems, meaning that this scene is a frequent occurrence throughout our Milky Way galaxy and probably throughout every galaxy that populates the entire universe. Planets orbit stars because of gravity, but that gravity doesn't just impact smaller bodies and planets and satellites, it, it impacts everything. A binary system contains two stars that orbit a common center mass. They are gravitationally bound. The distance between these binary stars can be vastly different from case to case. Sometimes stars are so close that the only way to identify that the point of light that you're looking at is actually two separate stars is to measure their combined spectrum. These binary star systems are called spectroscopic binaries. The stars travel around their orbits, and as one of the stars travels towards Earth, towards us, the other travels away. The dark line in the star spectra are red shifted as they move towards us and blue shifted as they move away. Sometimes one of the stars in the binary system orbits its companion star. This is probably what most of us think of when we visualize an orbit. You have the star in the middle and its companion binary orbiting around it like this. When the orbiting star passes between the star it orbits and Earth, the center star in the middle, that star's brightness dips. This, of course, can be measured, confirming a binary star system. Binary stars in an orbit like this can even gravitationally swap material, mostly hydrogen. When the star that is receiving the material can no longer consume any more material, this creates a nova. A nova is the result of the rapid fusion of accreted hydrogen on the surface of the star creating a runaway fusion reaction. It is a nuclear explosion, which causes the star to suddenly increase its brightness by up to 10 magnitudes. Now, those two examples of binary star systems involve orbits that are on a level plane to Earth from the viewer. Kind of like if you got eye level on a pool table and had two of the billiard balls moving around one another, at a certain point, the balls would appear to cross paths, eclipsing the one furthest. But other binary star systems are much easier to detect. They might not be in that level, plane orbit from Earth from the viewer. Picture that same pool table analogy I just mentioned. But instead of your eye being level with the surface, you're now looking at the billiard balls from a top-down view. You could easily detect that these two billiard balls are moving around one another, that they're gravitationally in lockstep. And if these two stars are further apart from one another, it makes it even more obvious and easier to measure. You might look through a high-powered telescope at two separate stars in the night sky. To discover if they're a binary star system sharing an orbit, you can actually measure their movement over many years, and have an exact calculation of their orbit. Of course, this video is only barely scraping the surface of the information out there about binary star systems. This is a subject matter that you could easily get lost in and find yourself going down a rabbit hole of information and research until the wee hours of the morning. It's fascinating stuff, and I'm too much of a dummy to understand most of it. But I find the research fascinating, I find the thrill of discovery addicting. After all, the universe is big. So big that when you try to contemplate it and contemplate your existence, your brain starts to hurt. But that contemplation is a drug. It's an addictive thought. In the 1990s, the Hubble Space Telescope's discoveries led to the estimation that there are roughly 200 billion galaxies 
in the observable universe. But recent research from last year, from 2016, has revealed that the 200 billion number is 10 times too small. This new research has led the folks at NASA, ESA, and the Goods team to estimate that there are roughly 2 trillion galaxies in the observable universe. 2 trillion galaxies, each with hundreds of billions or even trillions of stars. With those mind-boggling numbers, the impossible to imagine scale and scope, it's possible, just possible, that the infinite odds point to that there might really be a Luke Skywalker standing atop a mound of dirt on Tatooine, gazing out at a couple of twin suns. Hello Greedo, out. Always with you would connect be done. It's like doing here. Bad idea.